Talk a little bit about the bad blood that you had with McDessie in the run up to this fight. Honestly, it was just like we trained together seven years ago, 2015 in Tristar. We were like training partners. Then we split the team, it can happen, you know, and he fight his own way. And uh, we got matched 2019, three years ago. I had some visa issues, I had to pull out. Then I want to, you know, uh, get the fight rescheduled. It didn't happen. Then we were supposed to fight in February. He got injured. Now there's a third time. In between that, we had a little bit of Twitter trash talk. You know, but it was nothing personal, like he didn't say something against my family, me either. We didn't cross the line, it was like just a little bit of trash talk to hype up a little, the fight a little bit. Now we squash the beef, you know, and uh, everything is fine. Because we saw you kind of get in each other's faces at the end of round one. Were you surprised with that? Was that, you know, with just heat of the moment? Honestly, I just love this, you know, I love to fight, I love the sport, I, I love the promotion and, you know, it's not like I want to act tough, I just enjoy this moment, you know, I, he wants to compete with me, we want to, we want to, uh, it's just a fight, you know, it excites me so much and uh, it was a little bit of, yeah, you want to stay here, let's continue, you know, and then we get back to the corners. And you said, you know, it's been rescheduled so many times, was it important for you to, to make sure that you got this fight, to be able to close the chapter on it? Of course, because if you get matched up with somebody two times, uh, then it's kind of an open book. Now we close the book, we, we head to the next challenge. And also he had a lot of experience, you know, he is, I think he's in the UFC for 10 years, something like this. He's a very experienced guy, very mature guy, awkward style, like he, not everybody's fighting like him. I want to, you know, show a little bit of uh, my real skill set against him. And uh, I'm, I'm happy and proud that I did today. And you trained before in the past, but did that kind of... Did that have any relevance tonight, or do you feel like it was too too long ago? Too long ago, to be honest. I cannot even remember the sparring we had. I just remember like it was a friend, like we were friendly after. It was not, nothing personal. And uh, man, he's everybody deserves respect who enters the octagon today because we sacrificed too much injuries, diet, too much. Nobody knows except the fighters and. Every fighter deserves respect, and uh, you know, I just can't say good things about all the fighters, my opponents, because we make this uh, big event happen today. Of course, and you know, for you to get back in the win column as well after those two losses, how much does that mean to you tonight? Honestly, it means a lot, but look who, who I face, you know, I fought the number eight guys with horrible circumstances, I fought a veteran like Bobby Green, also with bad circumstances, but the circumstances, they are not excuses, as soon as I enter the octagon, you know, it's my responsibility to be 100% ready, you know, and I learned a lot through the last year, it was a very, very tough year, I lost my mother one year ago, my biggest loss in life, you know, and uh, so much change, and I think, it made me grow as a, as a person, as a person, as a human being a lot. And uh, we look forward to the future because good stuff can happen, bad stuff can happen, you know. This is life. And with that in mind, what do you see in your future? What do you see next week? I went back to my roots with uh, Rafael Kudira. I went back to King's IMA. But uh, of course, I have first I have my coach, my brother. He's like family to me. We work as a team together, you know. I have two legendary coaches and my heart and so my big brother, Hijo. Like he's, nobody knows about him, everybody sees him in the corner and they are like, okay, so his brother, but he's the biggest talent I've ever seen in my life. And hopefully you're gonna make also big noise soon because this guy is just different level and I'm excited for him also to show. And have two legendary coaches, I cannot embarrass them inside the octagon, you know, so I have a lot of, a lot of pressure on me. And I'm just happy to have both of them and my big brother in my corner and uh, I have an unbeatable corner and an unbeatable team and just put in the work, stay healthy, stay positive and the future is big. Thank you, congrats. Thank you. That's right, Brett. You're, congratulations on the uh, the win tonight. You mentioned his awkward style. Was there anything he did tonight that caught you off guard? Honestly, not really. I expect everything, everything exact. He did. He did more pressure than his pre than in his previous fights. I kind of expected a little bit of pressure because he hurt his last guy in the first second minute, and he, he switched. You know, he went forward. Usually, like this, he's fighting on the back foot, distance, touch and go. You know. And um, if I would come prepared for a touch and go fighter, he would surprise me today. He did a little bit, but I expected this spinning back uh, first and all, everything. He was tough, he's experienced, very experienced. He survived and knocked him down. I felt he's not out, so I let him survive. The double X, I showed a little bit of my wrestling and uh, I'm satisfied and yeah.
Just good. You said it was nothing personal, the trash talk. It seemed like you had something to say to him at the uh, face-offs yesterday as well. What what was it that you said to him there? I just told him, let's finish this, because it's just an open book. Oh, okay, I'm gonna, I want to fight you, hey, let's go, bullshit guy, this, that, too much, you know, back and forth, back and forth, three years. Now we close the book, and uh, the next challenge is ahead, and let's go. And speaking of that challenge, when would you like to return? Do you have any time frame in mind? No time frame, to be honest. I'm not gonna rush things. I, this is my 10th fight today. And this is my fifth year in UFC. I, I, I grew up in the UFC. I signed when I was just, I just moved 22 when I signed with UFC. And uh, I became, a, let's say, a man inside here, inside this octagon. Now I'm gonna take it step by step, take every fight very carefully, healthy, especially healthy with w good preparation, like I had this time. And um, let's see. Growing up in the UFC, like you said, is there benefits to that? Would you have preferred more time before you made your debut? Good and bad, to be honest. Everything in life have good and bad. The good thing I can say, all the, let's say, bad experience I did in my early years. Imagine I'm 30, sign with UFC, I do the mistakes, what I did in my past, in this octagon, then let's say I have a couple of years and then I need to uh, start retire, you know? So I'm happy that I had all the, let's say, mistakes, setbacks, experience, circumstances, early in my years, early in my career. Like Charles, Charles Oliveira, look at Charles Oliveira. He had eight, eight losses in UFC, now he's a champion, looks like, let's say, unbeatable, you know? And I think experience makes a big factor and he still needs a lot of more experience and I'm very excited for the future. Congrats again. Just one yeah, question. right here. Um, so, um, at the end, you uh, thank the King of Morocco and you, rep you chose to represent Morocco. So, I know that you got a lot of Moroccan friends. So, why uh, did you make this uh, choice? I don't want to go too much into detail with this, you know. Uh, I was not allowed to use the Afghanistan flag and I was very proud and happy to represent the Moroccan flag because the country supported me in my sports career a lot. And we are brothers, Afghanistan and Morocco, we are brother, we all one. And I represent Afghanistan as my no nation, it cannot change this, you know. And I'm very happy that I made this war talk country proud today. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, just one question from me, Glückwunsch, uh, Yeah. Um, you had a lot of support um, in the arena. How was your experience in Paris, France, first event in France, and how did you recognize the, the emotions coming from the ranks? Honestly, after my 10th fight in the UFC, uh, I don't pay too much attention to the crowd, you know? Because if you pay too much attention to the crowd, some, sometimes you lose the focus, and you get cash with something, whatever, you know? I just try to focus on my opponent. Of course, it's a nice feeling, everybody's cheering and this and that, because this makes a sport, you know, big. Let's say, without fans, there's no UFC. So, I'm proud that, I'm happy that the arena was packed today, and uh, I loved everything about fought in the fight in Paris. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you guys. See you soon.